name is Dasha, this is David. Uh, we come from the Laboratory of Software Architectures and Information Systems from the Masaryk University here in Brno. And today we would like to present you our view on ensuring fair behavior among autonomous vehicles. Yeah, so our research is around autonomous ecosystems. Uh, mine is around trust and safety and Dasha is more in the governance and ethics area. And uh, of course, this is, this is some collaborative product of ours. So what are autonomous ecosystems, you would ask? Uh, imagine, very simply, a ton of self-driving cars uh, forming a collective, uh, being like a social structure. Uh, we envision that all the autonomous, not just vehicles, but devices in the future will have some kind of collective approach, uh, which brings inherently a lot of uh, unpredictability and needs uh, new, it brings new problems and, of course, needs solutions for it. If we look uh, from a software architecture perspective, you can think of a normal software system as a plan of a building. And if we take this further to an ecosystem, it can be uh, analogized to a plan of a city with all the buildings in inside, but also uh, roads, uh, electricity, sewage, and other infrastructure. So obviously this brings new, uh, new questions and new problems into the equation. One of them is safety, which I work with, but we're not gonna, not gonna talk about it. So in the case of autonomous vehicles, you probably see them like this, like Red Hat in vehicle operating system folks. I'm not sure if they are here. Some? Okay. Uh, so you deal with functional safety and you don't deal with self driving, but others do. Uh, things like collision avoidance, basically on the individual level. How, the way we see it is more like the collective level, as we don't care with, about individual vehicles, we care about the whole collective coordination, synchronization governance. Uh, one good example is vehicle platooning, when multiple vehicles move in one uh, single column. Yeah. Okay, so by definition, autonomous vehicles uh, can drive by themselves. Uh, that means that uh, they can drive without human controlling the driving functions. In other words, the human is no longer in uh, is no longer in direct control of uh, the vehicle's navigation, acceleration, braking, or any decision-making processes while on the road. Uh, yeah, uh, the lack of human control in this direct control of the vehicle has its advantages as well as uh, disadvantages, naturally. The most obvious advantage is that there are no human errors, as uh, autonomous vehicles are considered to be uh, more precise and more reliable in terms of uh, following the traffic rules uh, and also handling hazardous situations uh, that happen on the road. Uh, besides that, the lack of human factor uh, also offers faster coordination and uh, better forensic awareness, uh, allowing a more precise data collection and analysis uh, in case of any road accidents. Uh, it also offers uh, stricter rule enforcement. Yeah, regarding the uh, disadvantages, you can have compatibility issues, obviously. Not all the vehicles are done by the same manufacturer. There is not just Apple of the cars, which has one hardware and one software. You can have various softwares that uh, deal with this ecosystem, this collective differently. Uh, an extreme case of the compatibility is the human driver among autonomous vehicles. Uh, you can also have cascading failures. It's sometimes enough to attack one vehicle that would feed false data to others and disrupt the whole ecosystem if we talk about the collective. Uh, and the most important and mon most interesting from this topic is the lack of generous and fair behavior. Us humans are capable of doing so, but uh, Autonomous vehicles are not, and Dasha will talk more about this part. Yes, so what is actually meant by fairness? Fair behavior in terms of driving systems refers to actions that consider not just the strict adherence to traffic rules, but also the social and ethical aspects uh, of driving. 
In other words, uh, this fairness encompasses the human element of empathy and judgment, which might be quite challenging for autonomous vehicles to replicate uh, accurately. Uh, in practice, this means, for example, uh, behaving uh, courteous or uh, generously towards uh, the others, uh, for example, by allowing other vehicles to merge into your lane or giving way to pedestrians. So now we can all agree on the fact that uh, fairness is something that goes beyond um, uh, what is enforced by the traffic rules um, themselves. Uh, but when the drivers behave uh, generously, um, they contribute to a more harmonious ecosystem without any conflict, which then leads to a more efficient uh, traffic systems. So uh, this highlights the importance of incorporating these human-like uh, traits even in autonomous um, ecosystems. Okay, uh, so in this picture, we can see three different uh, situations where the selective, um, selected vehicles can only continue in their journey, only if uh, other vehicles ex explicitly allow them to do so. In all of these cases, uh, that's situation one, situation two, and situation three, the acts of generosity need to be executed. Uh, uh, yeah, as these situations are derived from from uh, rules which are enforced by the traffic signs. So in situation one, we can see a vehicle A which is trying to merge from a secondary road, but it has to yield uh, to other vehicles which are going on the on the main road. So in this case, the vehicle B has the opportunity to slow down so that vehicle A can merge. Uh, in the second situation, we have vehicle C that has to stop and yield uh, in order to merge into the two-line uh, road. Uh, this can take quite some time because the traffic on the two-way line, uh, yeah, two-way road is quite heavy. And the situation also affects uh, all vehicles standing behind the vehicle C yeah, in the queue. Uh, yeah, again, in this situation, the, the traffic uh, on the left part of the two-lane road can be temporarily halted by a vehicle D, uh, which can slow down so that the vehicle C has, <coughs> has the chance to, to merge, and uh, this will also affect all other vehicles standing in the queue. And the last situation, the situation number three, we have vehicle E, which uh, wants to uh, turn left, no, turn right at the end of the road, um, and wants to merge into the right lane before absolutely necessary to do so. Uh, so vehicle F can slow down and let the vehicle E to order in front of it. And maybe you have already noticed that also this uh, will allow the vehicles standing in the queue behind the ve vehicle C uh, to, uh, to move further and continue in their way. Okay, now when the situation is more clear, there is still the question, how can we actually motivate these vehicles to behave generously towards the others? And this is where I will shine. So. Uh, I had this idea of monetizing using some kind of cryptocurrency, but please don't get scared. Uh, we are not those people who will sell crypto to you. Uh, basically, what, I, what we came up with is to incentivize the generator's behavior by having it as something that you can buy and sell, a service, uh, using some kind of token. So each act of generosity can be uh, rewarded with some kind of let's say cryptocurrency, uh, that can be used in the future for other fair behavior. Uh, there is, of course, this philosophical question, if it's really generosity, if uh, there are rewards and there is some money involved. But uh, there was this German guy, Friedrich Nietzsche, who said that basically everybody is selfish and does everything for their own gain, regardless of uh, on what level. Basically, uh, if you... Even if you're helping others, it makes you feel better, so you're basically selfish. So, <laughs> so you, can, uh, you can think about it 
like that, that each car is selfish, it's greedy for those coins. But if you look at it from the outside, and if we think that these, these coins don't leave the network, then uh, you don't even need to see the coins from, from outside. From the outside, it can be perceived as a more fairer network, even though there is some kind of money exchange inside. So uh, if people, I see some people who were here on my last year's talk where we were talking about running smart agents and guaranteeing that those run on autonomous vehicles. I'm not going to go into deep into that. Basically, we are thinking about creating some kind of smart contract that can be executed on the vehicles. Uh, same execution as the smart agent model where the execution of the smart uh, agent actually runs, uh, like does the movements of the vehicle. Uh, and I will give it back to Dasha here. Yes, this is the schematic uh, view on our proposed solution. Uh, we will first start from the point of view of the vehicle in need, that's uh, on the left part, the so-called beneficiary. So the process starts when the beneficiary realizes it's uh, in need of an act of generosity from other vehicle. So it, uh, in case the vehicle has uh, an ex uh, expendable amount of tokens available for barter, it proposes a smart contract, the so-called contract of generosity. This contract um, contains uh, all the steps or instructions for the other vehicles which uh, have to be uh, taken in order to get the reward. Uh, the, the price for proposing this uh, smart contract is then calculated as sum of uh, the reward itself and the tra transaction fees. Uh, when the smart contract is proposed, the ecosystem has to validate it, so it checks uh, for at least two things. The first one is that uh, there is in enough funds available for uh, paying the, the transaction fee as well as the reward to the benefactor, and uh, also that the ecosystem does not incentivize uh, harmful behavior of uh, other vehicles. Uh, when this uh, smart contract is validated by the ecosystem, then it is moved to a common portal where it is accessible and uh, uh, available for reading by other vehicles which are capable of executing it. Yeah, from the perspective of the benefactor, uh, the car that can help, it looks for, ideally it looks for uh, places where it can gain more currency. So it finds a smart contract, executes it by executing, I mean like does the movements that are described there by directly running the instructions described in the smart contract. And then when it's uh, successfully executed, it gets the rewards for it. Yeah, and in general, <laughs> uh, by using this principle, an ecosystem uh, which rewards individual acts of generosity, uh, those, uh, autonomous vehicles uh, then contributes to the collective fairness of the whole ecosystem, which then leads to uh, a more stable uh, situation in the ecosystem and also drives collaboration among autonomous vehicles. Yeah. So let's see, uh, let's see an example scenario, a simplified one. Uh, so here, vehicle, it's similar to the previous one, just I removed the rest. So, or Dasha removed the rest. Uh, she's the better with drawings. So vehicle A is in need of uh, some fair behavior because there is stuck slowly moving traffic and it would wait for like, let's say half an hour. Autonomous vehicles by default wouldn't really think about letting A go. They just individualistic and they think about like, they don't think, yeah. Humans would, maybe one human, if one of them would be human, they would just think, yeah, this guy is suffering here. Let's, 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 let's pass him through and it, it would be better, I would feel much better after that. So, vehicle, autonomous vehicle A proposes a smart contract where one of these vehicles has to slow down so vehicle A can merge in, creates the smart contract, pushes it to the common portal. Uh, B, C or vehicle D can execute it. B doesn't have to, so let's say vehicle C decides to execute it, slows down, B passes, A can merge in, contract was executed, reward uh, is given to vehicle C. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, now you still may have the question in your minds, like why would the autonomous vehicles actually use this? So the answer is simple, by collecting fairness tokens uh, for doing something in favor of the others. Uh, these tokens can then be used by a vehicle uh, in the future when the vehicle itself is in need and uh, wants to ask for uh, acts of generosity from other vehicles. Karma. <laughs> yeah, that's me. So there are some issues as well that we might bring into the world, like inflation. Uh, you've seen it in the last few years. Or, or hoarding, when, uh, when uh, one vehicle could get all the tokens and then just go through the whole city without any punishment, like in God mode in GTA. Uh, uh, there is also an issue of how to set the prices, where we aren't sure yet. And the last one is how and when to create the tokens. We probably don't want to allow it to people, uh, I mean people, uh, to autonomous vehicles because that can bring even more problems into that. So we are planning to work with some economists, but we already have some ideas. Yes, as for the possible solutions, as David said, uh, they need to be uh, thought through and elaborated more in details. But uh, we have some ideas on how to solve them and we won't reinvent the wheel and we get uh, inspiration from the history. So let's go back to 1932 to Austria uh, where in the Austrian city of Virgil uh, a local economist proposed a local currency which was designed to lose 1% of its value every month. So the Mm, holders of, of money were uh, motivated to spend it as quickly as possible. In our scenario, this could be implemented uh, in a way that the tokens uh, could be uh, available to spend for only a short period of time. However, the exact um, DTL value uh, should be mm, decided by the ecosystem itself, uh, depending on, on the context that is, uh, depending on the current situation uh, on the road. Another possible solution is to um, implement mega contracts, uh, which would be issued by the ecosystem. So it wouldn't be just the individual vehicles asking for acts of generosity to other vehicles, but that would be also the ecosystem as a whole uh, proposing contracts which would be targeted at multiple uh, vehicles in order to solve a road situation of any kind. That would also um, include um, creating or minting new new tokens uh, but this did by the ecosystem, but this would help uh, solving even more complex uh, road situations. And the last one I would talk, I will talk about uh, today, uh, deals with the correctly setting of uh, pricing mechanisms. We believe that uh, fully liberated pricing mechanisms and uh, where the prices are set by individuals and the demand regulates them might not be the best idea. Uh, and also we think that the fixed prices of proposing the contracts might motivate the vehicles to misuse the system in case the prices are set too low or to demotivate them uh, in case the prices are set too high. So we propose to uh, we, we propose a hybrid uh, system where the uh, where the prices could be regulated to some extent by the ecosystem um, itself uh, based on the context that means based on the road situation. Uh, and yeah, when talking about history, we got inspired by the uh, pricing mechanisms in Czechoslovakia uh, before the year 1989. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's our talk, and I guess we will have like 10 minutes for questions. <laughs> yeah, Vasek?
Yeah, so the first question was why we want to use blockchain, uh, even though we have some centralized solution. The solution will be not be fully centralized. We would like to share it among cities as well. And we want to get off some weight from the city infrastructure. Uh, imagine like the city has some kind of already a lot of administrative things. And it, uh, it's, it's probably less burden if they only have 51% of the hashing power than actually having the whole, whole just the scoreboard and maintaining it uh, infrastructure wise. So here the point is that uh, we can utilize those vehicles. They have enough computing power to keep this blockchain alive sometimes even without the city. Redundancy, I would say. And the second one, uh, did I answer your question? I'm not 100% not sure. Like, if we think about a centralized system like a SaaS, right, there is no, like, there's not that much compute happening with regard to this particular thing, right? Because when you are just computing, okay, what are, what are the contracts around me, which ones I can, I can use, I, I, I can answer you that. Uh, we have already some research around making sure that certain uh, things are executed on the vehicle using blockchain. So this would be an ex extension of that. It was a talk last year. Okay. I don't want to go into that too much, but we can talk about it yeah. later. Awesome. And the, rather, uh, the other one is, uh, yeah, the other question was why we aren't okay with open market economy. We will definitely do research around that as well, but uh, our preliminary uh, guesses and and like whatever I looked into it so far were were uh, pointing towards a hybrid model. Okay. Okay, so the question is how can we make this actually fair if people have money? This is not money, this is an internal money and it's, it's not, it, you cannot top it up by external money. So the only way to get these coins is to be nice. Exactly, the, the God mode thing, that's why we are thinking about the hybrid model of pricing and the uh, TTL, so the token would only have a short lifetime until it can be spent. Yeah, the control that comes from the ecosystem that we were talking about uh, during the whole presentation is mostly because of these kinds of situation of misusing the system and uh, yeah, driving in God mode. <laughs> Pick somebody, please. <laughs> okay, for example, you. Uh, on the other hand, how do you handle the people who spend their token and never do it again? They get to zero and they blow up others that have the token. Uh, like in this case, the fairness wouldn't work because I have token, I can drive through the city. Again, the, the, that's the situation where the where. Oh. <laughs> okay, so so the question was uh, about how to ensure that uh, uh, even if uh, a vehicle has enough tokens to ask for acts of generosity from the others, uh, but in case somebody is blocking uh, the vehicle so that uh, it uh, prevents the others to help the vehicle in need, that was your question, right? Hey. Uh, 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 more about how to uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, 
So the solution for deadlock are the mega contracts, partially that the ecosystem can detect situations like that. Also, even if you run out of the tokens, the city still works. It might be slower or might be normal uh, for, for the vehicles uh, because they don't have the incentivization, but the system still works. The idea here is that if there is a bigger clogging, then the ecosystem can propose a mega contract that solves that clogging, and everybody parci participating in that clogging gets those new tokens from the minted. Okay. You? Uh, I couldn't hear you, sorry, can you speak, please, please speak louder? Yeah, so, yeah, so there was the God mode and the Grandpa mode. Uh, well, the vehicle itself, uh, oh, we are out of time. No, I will answer. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> I just said that there, uh, he asked about the God mode, but there is also a Grandma mode where somebody is just being too polite to block everybody. Uh, well, the idea is that the autonomous vehicles would be implemented in a way to get efficiently from A to B, so they are not interested in slowing down the traffic. They, they, they are individualistically greedy. So their idea is to get as much tokens as they can get into further point, but uh, also the grandma mode wouldn't wouldn't be beneficial for the grandma mode wouldn't be beneficial for them. If you think about that, uh, it's not a human driver. Okay, Petr. Yeah, so the question was why do we need the fairness itself if it's just a compensation for our driving system? Yes, it is a compensation for the driving system. You cannot create a totally utopistic, always working system. That's why the human fairness is in many cases helping the traffic in general and it's not written in the rules. And you cannot write rules for that. That's what we're trying to solve. Thank you for this question. This answers Washek's question partially. So the question was, uh, what if uh, the situation uh, here does bigger problems? The first, yes. yeah. So uh, the fa fairness here does bigger problems in the whole ecosystem. That's why the pricing isn't local, but regulated partially by the current context. So if it would clock something, then the ecosystem can give it a very low price, so it's not worth for anybody to do it. Just Uh, sorry? If I reach enough to afford that price, I can go cheap. But if I don't have a token, then I need to wait. It's not about richness. It's about if you've been nice before, <laughs> then you can merge in. If you, if you are being, being rude to the other drivers, then you wait. Cool. So many questions. <laughs> so less time. Can we? Five minutes. Okay. The lady?
to the other side. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, okay. So the question is more about what we, we have simple examples. What if about a different road with two lanes and A wants to turn to the left? Uh, I don't want to go into like how we, com we could compensate that with Caldor Hicks efficiency and all that uh, economical terms. But basically, the idea is that you can compensate multiple vehicles in multiple lanes uh, based on the current context. And also, we presented here only the most basic scenarios. And in real life, when there is a much bigger uh, intersection or when there are more complicated situations, these uh, situations are uh, typically also handled, for example, by traffic flights, etc. So there is another level of, of uh, control or organization on, on the road and not just uh, vehicles trying to solve the situation by themselves. So the question is, who gets the contract? Whoever signs up first for it. So there is a target who can execute it. Maybe the ecosystem will help, like targeting. If, if, if they accept it, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that. If if uh, one of them accepts it, then the rest might be compensated as well if they have to slow down significantly. That's again the Calder Hicks efficiency for which we need those financial experts. Uh, but the idea is whoever comes first. Or maybe the ecosystem can also jump in and say, like, not you. We, we haven't figured that out yet. OK, Jirka? No. That's why it's a bad idea to bring an academic talk to a bunch of engineers. <laughs> <laughs> so just to repeat the question, what if a human shows up or a, a pedestrian or a human driver or some autonomous vehicle that's not playing along with the system? Or a cat, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, in general, in autonomous uh, driving, semaphores are needed when humans are there. Otherwise, don't, because they can deal with among each other, even with this system, let's say. Uh, we took the liberty of not caring about humans and cats for now because it's, <laughs> this was from, from academia, I'm sorry. <laughs> you are still a PhD student, I think you understand. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yes, the question was. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> the question was uh, what to do in case that the vehicle A proposes a contract, uh, vehicle B decides to execute it, uh, but this will slow down also other vehicles standing behind the vehicle, so vehicle C and vehicle D. Yes, we have thought uh, about these kinds of situations, and that's why the other vehicles are compensated as well. So in case the vehicle B executes the contract the reward does not get only to the vehicle B, but also to other uh, vehicles which are affected by this uh, situation. Yeah, I'm going to mention third time Caldor Hicks efficiency. It's a partial rewarding compensation of C and D. Okay, we are out of time. <laughs>